Hey Flosstiv, I'm Deborah, and welcome to my channel, Stitch the Stash, and I am back! After recording my first video about two weeks ago, I decided it was time for me to come back again and share more with you. And uh, so yeah, first of all, I would like to thank everyone that has watched, liked, and subscribed to my channel. Um, it means the world to me, all your kind comments and your welcoming support. Um, I never imagined that I would be uh, received the way I have. So thank you so very, very much. Uh, what do I have in store for you today? Well, I have some show and tell, uh, no FOs. Uh, I have some whips, some new starts, haul, and maybe some plans. Yeah, definitely some plans. So. What am I talking about? Maybe. No, definitely. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here I am going to do a little section called show and tell. I remember when I was in elementary school, it was one of my favorite uh, activities to participate in. And so I thought I would use this opportunity to um, show off uh, maybe some stitching that I was gifted. Um, I will show you my very first cross stitch that I ever kept for myself, um, but I'm in the process of reframing that, so once I have that done, I will show it to you. But what I wanted to share with you first today was something that my mother cross stitched for me uh, back in 1994. And here it is. It is The Bride by Lavender Lace. And I absolutely love her. Um, she she gave it to me um, for my first wedding. I am divorced and remarried, and I love the fact that it's just a single bride. And it's all the DMC call fors. I'm not sure if she did it on the call for linen. I'm not sure, but uh, this is something that I cherish and treasure and it hangs on my wall um, as I'm entering towards back the back hallway towards the back bedroom areas um, so it's something that I see every day so I wanted to share this with you and I think I'm not sure I think it might be a 32 count linen I believe that's what it was called for and this pattern is actually still available through 123 stitch lavender lace the bride. So that is my show and tell. And we will move on to whips. So I have one, four whips that I worked on during the past two weeks. Um, and what I'm going to do, if I showed it to you before, I will include, um, I'm going to try to insert a picture up here. And if I can't figure that out, I will insert a still shot. So first up is pretty little San Francisco. Um, again, they got some love for a couple extra days about two weeks ago after I last showed it to you. And this is where we're at. I believe, I believe last time I didn't have this. I know I've added more of the bridge and I know that this is new. Uh, I love it and I'm anxious to get it finished because like I told you last week, I have five or six more of these that I would like to finish in my lifetime so I can get them on my walls and enjoy them. Um, and what I'm trying to do, because this is, I didn't say, this is a 32 count Lugana by Silk Weaver in Autumn Blush. And because of the dye, the weave is very tight. So what I'm trying to do is, work, I did start in the center and then I worked my way out and I'm going back across. Um, just so I don't have to try to squeeze stitches in between other stitches because it is such a tight weave. So that is Pretty Little San Francisco. 
hopefully I'll get a little bit more work on her her I'm talking talking like it's a she it it could be a she right um so I'm hoping to get a little bit more work on on it uh, before the end of the year we will see okay so the next one I have is I can drive a yes I can drive a stick by Lizzie Kate and yeah let's show you where I'm at with it I had here we go so last time again probably just saw the picture uh, I finished the fence I finished the word stick the exclamation these little I'm not sure what they're supposed to be um, I did pick out drive a because remember last time I said that I started the witch over too far this way so I went ahead and picked it out and I added the bat and there's this little like line that's right here oh I would have had this done but uh, excuse me I just got my hair cut and it's put bangs back in and they're like little all over the place um, I noticed when I went to put the A in for some reason my where it's supposed to be didn't line up with the bats and it was it's off but it's off down here so I'm not picking this out this time it can be fudged and you'll never know so it's our little secret and the fabric is 30 oh, it's, no 28 count Lugana picture this plus ale don't know if I'll finish this before the end of the year. I really should because it's really quick and get it off the books. Even though Halloween's passed. But we'll see. Next, I have uh, the Stiachalong. I believe, um, you'll see the picture of where I was, but. This is where I'm at now. A little more progress than the last time. Um, the two eyes have been added. I finished off. I don't think I had these finished last time. Um, clue three. These little doodads are from clue three. And I actually have clue one, clue two, clue three, and all of clue four to, to work on. Um, I'll get caught up and again still don't know what it's gonna be have no idea it's something that we could be turning the other direction it could be going sideways not sure um, but it's fun and it will be we I believe we have four more weeks of pattern drops and then the fifth week is it's gonna be something that we can you know, make it our own and this is the first year I've participated so I'm not quite sure what that's going to be um, last time I didn't share with you the palette that I had picked out uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and share the DMC colors that I picked out for this so my first color the, the dominant color is 3777 really pretty it's like an orange tone burgundy okay and color number two is 353 and it's a really pretty peach color three is 356 it's in the same family as this one but lighter and then my final color which uh the fourth color we were told that it's going to be the least amount you'll see is a 352 and it's a brighter orangey peach so i think these all go well together and um yeah i had four different palettes picked out and some were very bright, like summer colors, and I kept getting drawn towards the autumnal color. So I can say that 
I'm the type of person that likes to plan and likes to know uh, what's happening, what's expected. Um, when it comes to like mystery alongs, even for in my knitting, um, I kind of like to see how um, what a couple of releases are before I actually commit to it um, because I'm afraid I'm going to hate it. Uh, and also, while I was very excited to participate in this mystery stitch along, which is my first one, I had the hardest time picking colors and then I had the hardest time picking out which one was going to go where and I kept praying. I was like, oh please. I don't have to rip all this out and pick new colors. And I can say that I'm really, really, really happy with what I've chosen. So hopefully next time I will be all caught up. Me, because we're getting another pattern drop tonight. So not sure, we'll see. Okay, and my final whip is Bloom Where You're Planted by With Thy Needle Thread, by, designed by Brenda Gervais. Love, love, love. I gave a love, love to this pattern last weekend. I believe this is what I worked on all Sunday. And I've made some good progress. As you can see, I finished the L. And... I've done these little doodads. I'm not quite sure what they're supposed to be. And I started the leaves of the first flower, and that's the very the beginnings of the very first flower. And I know I told you last time that I was doing all the called for colors, uh, except for the, the letters, the, the red. I changed this to Weeks Dye Works Brick. I'm laughing because Shanna. He's right over there. She's sniffing my, my drink and she's getting ready to pass by. But uh, so, so we may see her, but she's being a little more quiet this time. She was taking a nap right there. But then as soon as I started talking to you, guess what? She came and sat over here and she's been watching me. But maybe she'll be more behaved this time. So anyway, as I was saying, I changed the letters to be brick, weak style work, but I also changed two other colors. And let me show you in the pattern. Uh, these little veins in the flower leaves is supposed to be mustard seed. But when I went to kit up this pattern, I had, this was sold out everywhere. So what does one do? Uh, I saw that there wasn't much of this thread being used in the pattern, so I looked up to find out what a DMC equivalent would be. And that is DMC 832. They are spot on. So if you're ever looking for a substitute for mustard seed, DMC 832 and before I started this this came back in stock but I decided since there were so few stitches used in this pattern um, of the mustard seed instead of breaking into the skein I went ahead and used the DMC and you can't you can't tell because the variegation in this is very subtle so the other color I changed is right here, this little tiny bit of red in the bird's neck is a Valdani floss. And I did not want to purchase that floss just for this pattern. I didn't know when I would ever use it again. So again, I went to a DMC equivalent, which is spot on, and this is DMC 356. And again, I figured because there's so few stitches in that location on the pattern that you would never know that I didn't use the Baldani floss. So those are the only 
different threads that I'm using in this pattern. Other than that, everything else is the same. And I am hoping to get more progress on this. I did, I was enjoying working on it so much. It was last Sunday, it was, yeah, last Sunday. And uh, I wanna get it done so I can get it framed, get it hanging. So that is the last of my whips. But that hasn't been all the, the stitching that I've been working on. I have four new starts. Yep, I couldn't contain myself from starting all the things. I think the reason why I started is because my last video I said I had 17, 18, 19 whips and that wasn't uh, a lot and my sister thought that was hilarious because I, uh, most people would say that is a lot um, but I know there are people out there with a lot more. And so I was having a text conversation with her and I confirmed with her that it's like, oh, I have 19. And she told me that 19 played a very prominent number in um, a book series that she and her husband are reading. And I said, well, is it a good number or a bad number? And she said, oh, very bad. I said, oh, okay, so I need to start something so I'm not st stuck on that bad number and get... And uh, so I said, but what do I do if I finish something? Then I'll be back down to that bad number. So what does one do? They start four, th four new things. So now I'm up to 23 whips. So therefore, if I finish something, I'm, I'm still steering clear of that number. Okay, so I had mentioned in my last video uh, that uh, I went to Needle Workers Delight back on October 6th and I took a class uh, called Turn, Turn, Turn. Uh, the pattern is by Noteworthy Needle and Janice Note was the one um, putting on the class and I went to that with Carmen from uh, the Broadway Stitcher and Caitlin the Big Apple Stitching uh, here on Floss Tube and I thought, well, it's been a month, so maybe I should start this pattern. So, here we go. Turn, turn, turn. And we spent all of the class basically learning how to put the finished piece together. And we didn't actually do any of the stitching in, in the class. Um, and the kit provided some gingham and we learned how we were going to sew it up to turn it into this little kaleidoscope that turns on itself to change to each of the seasons. So we have the winter, autumn, summer, spring, summer. And very, very cool concept. Um, I don't know. I joked around with Carmen that I asked her how much she charged for shit, uh, charged for finishing because I can stitch it, but I'm not so sure that I'm confident in myself in, in finishing it. Um, we had a little good laugh over that. So, uh, here are all the threads that were provided. They're all gentle art sampler threads, and then we have two DMCs over here. Very pretty colors. And I started with this one, which is autumn leaves. And here we, oops, sorry. And here's my start. The fabric is a 32 count Wichelt, and I believe it is sea spray. Let me just, let me just check. It is. Yep, sea spray. And I started in the center um, simply because the way the ends are, you have to do it in hand because um, you're eventually folding over the edges and sewing through both layers. So I decided I wanted to go ahead and start in the center and work my way out until I get to those two edges. So in the center... Uh, motif is actually part of the autumn tree so I thought that was very appropriate since we are in autumn or fall whichever you want to call it and I am loving it 
So we'll see how long it takes for me to finish. That's going to be the thing. How long was it going to take me to finish? Hmm, hopefully, hopefully I, en I enjoyed, I, I started that on I believe Thursday night and I, I was actually uh, really enjoying stitching on it because stitching at night, I have to stitch under a, a magnifier and bright light. And this fabric is so bright that I had no problem seeing the holes. So this might become um, an after work uh, stitching project. So I probably should hopefully get more, more done on it. And my next start is, uh, it's by Brooks Books and it's her Wizard of Oz series. And I'm doing all the characters and I'm going to do them all in one row. So I've already done the first one, um, and you'll see that in my whip parade. Um, but I went ahead and started. Okay, where we go? Here we go. Dorothy. I started her. Um, not much done because, well, I'll show you. We have more of the yellow brick road and she is going to be starting right here so I spent majority of my st uh, stitching time uh, from here down putting that in um, and this is petite treasure braid that I absolutely love stitching with over here <clears throat> excuse me Sip of my tea. Put it there. Uh, over here, when I worked on the scarecrow, I originally used the DMC light effects. Hated it, regretted it. Said, "What the heck am I doing with this? I'm never gonna finish this project because of this." So I went and purchased a Krennic, and that's what this is right here. And I first tried it with a single strand, and I didn't like the coverage. So then I tried it with two strands, and um, liked it so much better. However, I enjoy stitching with the Petite Treasure Braid so much more. And I know one of the future characters, I believe it's the witch, majority of her is the glittery stuff so I've decided that I'm gonna stick with the petite treasure braids route I'm going to rip this out it's been ripped out three times so fourth time is the charm fourth, fourth time is the charm right and put in the petite treasure braid now I probably could leave it because when you look at it it's you uh sorry um you can't really tell uh, so much that is that much different this is the this is a little bit thinner than this so being who i am i'm going to rip it out and put in the petite treasure braid also i noticed on dorothy if i can hold her upright her shoes let me put some down. her shoes her shoes hello Deborah, get your act together. Where's the camera? They are metallic silver and her bows are red. Now, the Dorothy I know has red glittery shoes. I know that she probably started out with normal shoes and then she upgraded to the glittery shoes the red glittery shoes, so that's what I'm going to do. I am going to use the red petite treasure braid and make her shoes red. So that's the one change I'm going to do. So that is, oh, and the fabric on this is, one moment, it is a 28 count Joblin coffee. And this is like 55 inches long. 
because like I said, I'm going to put every single, there's 12 of them, and they're all going to go on one long piece. And I will definitely have to have that professionally framed because it's way, it's going to be way too big. Um, so I have to save my pennies for that, that's for sure. All right, my next start is, was, is, by Soda Stitch, Ice Cats. I was enabled by Caitlin of the Big Apple Stitching. Uh, when I first found her channel, I went and watched every single video and she was stitching this and finished it. And I'm like, uh, me please, I, I, I need this. So I went and ordered this um, from, the, from Etsy. And I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. And the fabric I'm using is... It is from Hand Dyed Happiness. And she has an Etsy store. All the links will be down below. And it is called... It is a 28 count Lugana. And it's called Strawberry Jam. And... Oh, isn't this pretty? I I love it. The modeling on it. Beautiful. So let me show you my little teeny tiny start on it. And when I say teeny tiny start, it's a teeny tiny start. There you go. I started in the center and that little bit is right here. So I'm excited to be working on it. And this will probably become a travel, Shannon's on my stitching, um, a travel project simply because it's 28 count um, the holes are big enough to where I can see them without fantastic light. I just, I wear contacts, uh, so I just have to put readers on, and if I have decent light, I'll be able to work on this. Kind of like a Busy as a Bee, the Tiny Modernist piece. Uh, I'm able to travel with that because it's a light colored fabric. So this is probably going to become a travel piece. Then... My last start, which I think a lot of you are excited about and waiting for because everybody com well almost everybody commented about how they couldn't wait to see the progress on this and that is my fall into winter by ships manor Ugh. now i said that i was going to start this on november 1st and i waited until last saturday saturday sunday evening to start it. I am using the call for colors, the call for fabric, which is 32 count uh, linen called Mummy's Wrap. And this is where we're at. Oh my goodness. It's as lovely and beautiful as I thought it would be to work on. Um, this is actually right here incorporating the three blues that I had showed last time. These three right here. And where I'm at is the center snowflake. And then I've done a little bit of this snowflake right here. And the center snowflake is almost done. I have to put these little doobly-doos on this edge, this edge, and then this edge. And then there are some stitches that need to go in here, in here, and then down in here. And then I will be done with that center, that center snowflake. I'm excited. I love it. This pattern came out in 2018, so I'm hoping that they are going to 
come out with a winter into spring, a spring into summer, and a summer into fall. Because if so, guess who's buying them? Yep. That would be me and Shanna. Hey, hey, get down. Thank you. Someone said that she has to have her diva moment, and I agree, but she's being a little bit more behaved this, this week, which is nice. So, yep. Yeah. So, that's where I'm at with my fall into winter. Uh, I am still hoping to have it finished by uh, the first day of uh, winter, which is December 21st. We'll see. Um, hopefully I, I will, but I'm not going to stress over it. It's, it's, it's not worth stressing over it if you don't, you know, make your self-imposed deadline. Um, I work well with deadlines. I, I, it's something that works with my personality. But if I don't make it, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. It's not worth it. It's, stitching is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be relaxing. And uh, I set a goal for myself so I can try to um, encourage myself to, to work on something and get it to the finish line. Um, because I, I want to finish stuff and have it hanging um, on my walls. So, but if I don't have it finished by December 21st, that's okay, because I'm going to have it finished before the end of winter. Um, so, we'll see. Excuse me. Can I help you? Do you want to say hello? Hmm? Do you want to say hello? No. She just wants to scratch my chair. She wants to sit in the chair with me. Um, she's, she's, she accompanies me at night in the stitching room and she likes to sit in the middle of my stitching spot and it she stares me down and I know what she wants she wants the chair that I'm sitting in but she just gonna have to wait all right so that is all of my whips and my starts and um, I'm excited uh, to be working on all of these now I have, let's go into haul. So let me get everything together. Okay, so I mentioned um, a lot that I went to New Yorkers Delight back on October 6th. So I thought I would share with you what I came home with from, from there. Um, I know it's been over a month ago, and some of my haul is just, you know, from the past three, four weeks. Um, so besides the Fall into Winter by Ships Manor that I purchased, I also purchased this pattern. It's Kesslin's, it's called uh, Sherry's Hearts. And it is so pretty. Um, I think everything that I purchased this day was because I was attracted to the colors. Um... But also, I'm a very much of a romantic, and this pattern said, yes, please. <clears throat> I also purchased um, Jeanette Douglas Letters from Mom. It's the November. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love the flowers. I love the colors. <clears throat> I love that it says, remember me. And it also comes with the specialty threads for stitching it. I've never done a Jeanette Douglas pattern before, so I'm, I'm super, super excited to have this, and I want to start it. All right, the next item that I purchased is Strawberry Shortcake from Glendon Place. <laughs> yes, please. Can we say yum, yum, yum? Now, as with a lot of Glendon Place, they call for dinky dyes. And for me to stitch this with the dinky dye silks is probably like $50, $60. So I don't know if I'm going to ask Santa to bring them to me for Christmas or if I'm going to substitute the colors. I haven't really substituted a whole pattern before, so I'm a little nervous to do that, but we'll see. 
I'm going back to Needleworkers Delight on the 17th uh, with Carmen and, and Caitlin. So I might take a look at their threads there and see what I can come up for as substitutes. But I love this. And I want to start this like yesterday too. Okay, so the final pattern that I purchased from Needleworkers Delight is in Heaven and Earth Designs. And it's Love Potion Cat. Isn't she? Because yes, it's a she. Adorable. Well, look at those blue eyes. My mother and father used to have a had a white cat. And she reminds me of her. And when I picked this up, Caitlin had said, not that she was telling me how to stitch it, but she told me that I could find a fabric maybe in this color and just stitch everything on top of it and not have to do the background because this one is 450 stitches by 562 stitches using 89 colors. I don't know what I'm going to do. It will eventually get stitched, but this will not be my first hade. I haven't done a hade before, and I have one, and it's in my 2019 plans. And I will show that pattern to you uh, and when I do my, my, my plans video. But I couldn't leave her there. Super cute. Uh, I may be stitching on her when I'm 100 years old. We'll see. All right, so that was Needleworkers Delight Haul. My... Next purchase was from Color and Cotton. I was watching a certain individual's video, Caitlin, and she showed off her threads. And I'm like, I, I need some threads. So here we go. Let me pull out my little... Now what I did is I purchased ones that I thought were holiday or autumn colors because you may not be able to get them. Um, she may not re-dye them. So I went ahead and purchased uh, th what I liked. And the first one is called Carmine. Oh, this beautiful beautiful red I thought maybe that I might be able to substitute this into maybe some sort of Christmas patterns the next one is elf love it loved the movie silly movie but I loved it and I thought it was a great holiday fallish color. The next one is chartreuse. Really pretty light limey type green. Great for fall. Uh, the next one is, I've been looking at this one for months. And I was afraid that I was never going to be able to get it. So I went in and purchased it. Emerald City. Now, if you look at it, it kind of reminds me of one of my Ship's Manor threads that I'm using. But, love it. Next one is Sable. Really pretty browns, light browns. Reminds me of when the leaves are just starting to change. Leaves crunching under your feet. Very pretty. Then we have <clears throat> Bare Copper. Peachy tones, little some browns in there. Very nice. And then the last one I got is called seaweed. And I can't tell. I'm losing my light. Oh, but this is pretty accurate. It's really pretty green. Oh. 
Here we go. So, I don't have an issue substituting one or two colors out of a pattern. So I'm thinking that uh, that's what I'm going to use these for. And I'm going to, if I find a pattern that I like um, and these colors work with it, I'm, I'm going to substitute them. But until then, they'll sit in, my, sit in my stash. All right, so the next item I have here is I was able to join under, under, under the Sea Fabrics monthly club. She had opened up... Uh, memberships I believe in September and I was able to get on board so I got my first shipment and this is a 28 count Joblin excuse me and it's called Astrius and it's beautiful it's a really pretty purple maybe I could put some winter projects on it uh, I did, when she previewed the November fabric, uh, I had asked her if I could switch over to the 32 count Belfast linen because I thought it looked gorgeous on the linen. And so that's what I did for, for the next shipment. But this is really pretty. I'll, I'll find, uh, I have a lot of it so I can find uh, several pro projects for it. So that is that. Then I went to Misty Purcell's uh, Etsy shop, Luminous Fiber Arts, and she hand dyes linens, uh, also Ada. Uh, Ada, linen, and Monaco is what she dyes. And she also has two, she's a designer too, um, and she has two cross stitch patterns in her shop. Um, but I snatched up some of her, some of her linens and the first one, the first two were around Halloween and I was able to get some tiny pieces and this one is a 32 count linen and it's called Harvest Moon. Oh, it's a really pretty buttery yellow. Very pretty. Then I have also 32 count linen, deep, deep pumpkin, really pretty orange. Oh, there we go. I'm sitting in front of the big window, and and so the colors might be a little washed out, and I'm also losing the light. But I thought this would be great for some of my Halloween patterns. And then this is a. 28 count Monaco and it's her mint green and her latest uh, cross stitch pattern that she just released um, She used this mint green and I thought I could use this for some winter Christmassy Projects Then I also have a small bit of her 32 count linen of her midnight. Oh, yeah very pretty. She says you could use this as chalkboard, chalkboard fabric, and I agree. It's very, very pretty. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for, but I'll find something. And then her final fabric is, again, a 32 count linen, because, you know, like I said last time, uh, now that I've started uh, stitching on linen, I'm buying all the linen. So this one is called Sweet Pink. Oh, it's the softest pink and she had suggested that these would be nice for Christmas patterns, and I agree. Um, I have some big December stitching plans, and this probably will be used on one or two of my projects. Very pretty. I will link her um, shop below. Everything shop-wise will be linked below. All right, so then I purchased... Uh, from 123 Stitch, and this is a couple orders put together. Um, the first pattern I purchased was Hocus Pocus Halloween by Heart and Hand. Oh, I thought this was adorable. When I was at Needleworkers Delight, I had this in my hand, um, but I put it back. Well, what I what I like to do is, I believe I said this last time, I, I 
grab stuff that I really like, put it all together, and then at the end of the day, I went back through and decided what I really truly wanted to go home with. Um, so I left this one in the store, but then I saw people started finishing it and how they were FFOing it. I was like, oh, it's too cute not to have it. So I have that. Then I purchased, I had noticed that Satsuma Street had put out a new pattern, and this is Otoño. Oh, the colors got me. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So not only do I have the pattern, I bought the, the threads. Because if it's the colors that get you, then you need the threads. Because if you don't have the threads, then you're not going to get the colors. And then you may not love it as much. So there's one, two, three, four, six of these vari variegated threads from DMC that I purchased. Love it. And I want to start this like yesterday. Then my most recent purchase from 123 Stitch included Winter Christmas Eve. I purchased uh, from the Victoria Sampler Button Up Birdies number one. It's the November Chickadee and the December Cardinal, and I purchased it for the Cardinal. I, I love it. Be a really cute ornament. So I purchased that. Then I purchased this one, went in and out of my cart like 10 times over a month. And I finally said, yes, please. And it is by Rosewood Manor and it's winter. Mm hmm. Love, love, love the colors, the pattern, everything. Um, I love the autumn one also, but I knew this one had to come with me. And what's nice is it comes with the threads to stitch it. And they're 100% cotton. Hopefully, I've never stitched with these before, so hopefully they'll be nice. I'm sure they are. Um, and hopefully, I've just noticed that it says they're hand dyed in South Africa. Well, isn't that something? They're gorgeous. This might have to be started like yesterday. Oh, you know how some people have FOMO? Fear of missing out. I have foro. Foro. Fear of running out. So hopefully I have enough threads. I'm sure I do. All right. I also purchased. Oh, and I forgot to take it out of the package. I tried to take everything out of the package. It's the Cottage Garden Samplings. Um. It's the Songbird Garden Series, and this is number one, Forever and Ever. I love cardinals. I'm in a cardinal mood right now. I think it's because we're getting closer to Christmas and winter and snow and... <clears throat> yeah. So, gorgeous. I might switch out the threads because they're all Weeks Dye Works, which I have a love-hate relationship with them. They're absolutely gorgeous, but stitching with them can be a bear. I've learned how to adjust to stitching with them so they don't shred as much. Uh, I go up a needle size, and I also use much, I use shorter uh, lengths than I usually would, um, and that seems to help tremendously with them. Uh, but 
<clears throat> I don't know. We'll see. I had also purchased some 32 count blue spruce Belfast linen. Stitchy Shannon 85 showed this because she's doing a Biscornu ornament and this is the fabric she's using for it and I said I need this in my life. And I think this will be wonderful for uh, winter, winter patterns. Love it. Got a nice big 18 by 27 piece. So I have plenty of it. All right. So the final pattern that I purchased from 123 Stitch is the Prairie Schooler Button Up. Um, I love this. I'm so glad that they reprinted it. Uh, I started watching Helen D not too long ago and fell in love with her videos. So I decided to watch all of her back catalog. And when she <clears throat> found her unicorn chart, which was this, I was like, oh, I want it too. And fortunately, recently they reprinted it. So now... Helen D and Misty Purcell are doing a sal with this, and I'm going to join them. And this is hashtag button up sal, and it's a Christmas day start. And I'm on board for that with them. And Misty says she's going to be dyeing some fabric for this pattern, so I'm interested to see what she comes up with. I believe she had told me um, when I commented on her video that she was dyeing up two different colors um, and that she said she was going to have a hard time deciding which one she was going to use. So I <clears throat> I have an idea of what I would... I have a backup fabric that uh, I'll use just in case I'm not able to get any of her fabric for it. But this will be started on Christmas Day and I cannot wait. It's such a cute, cute pattern. Sorry, I had to cough, so I paused for a moment. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, the button-up sal starting Christmas Day. And uh, what I'm thinking was also uh, I might <clears throat> brighten up some of these colors, particularly the red. But we'll see. I'll have to take a look in my uh, stash and see what I could use. Maybe the coloring cotton that I just purchased. That might work. <clears throat> I'll pull the rest of the threads and put that in there and see what I think. But yeah. If you get this pattern and you have an interest in, in stitching it, um, join Helen and Misty and everybody else that will be uh, starting this on Christmas Day. I'm looking forward to it. I think I said that like a hundred times. All right, so <clears throat> the final two patterns I'm going to show you they are um, Mirabilia's. Uh, I have never stitched a Mirabilia. I have never stitched a Nora Corbett. Um, I have plans to. And when I came across Feather the Feather Fairy, uh, I definitely was ready for autumn. And when I look at her, that's what I see. And I'm planning on putting her on a dark brown, burnt brown. Um, <clears throat> I was looking at, I believe, picture this plus lupine linen. And I went to the, the viewer.com and put her on that fabric. And I haven't purchased it yet, but that's what I'm going to put her on. Uh, then I also purchased, and I got this off of eBay, but I had to have her. Fairy Moon. Oh. She's beautiful. I'm not going to be putting her on this brown. <clears throat> I picked out this deep, deep blue. Mystic, it's a picture of this plus, it's mystic, mystic something, I'm not sure. 
I haven't purchased it yet because the size piece I need <clears throat> a little pricey. So when I get ready to start her, I'll purchase the fabric. Uh, I also have Stargazer and I think I just love how they're both looking up and dreaming, hoping, wishing. Yeah. Because that's what I think when I look up like that. I'm excited. Don't know when I'll start them, but we'll talk about that when I go over my 2019 plans video. Um, so, let me get my notes. What else do we have? Uh, I wanted to do a shout out. Uh, super excited. It's a channel that when I went to YouTube was recommended to me. Um, and I said, okay. And it is Linda at Blue Horse Yellow Cow. I adore her. I wish that I lived in Chicago or she lived here in New York City because I would love to get together and stitch with her. She only has four videos out, um, and her videos are super short because she doesn't have like a hundred million whips like some of us do. And um, <clears throat> so her, so she shows what she's working on, and it could be one project, it could be two projects. I, you know, I love, I love the length of her videos. They're, they're, they're right to the point, and they are funny and she always puts a huge smile on my face um, she's done a video with her daughter Sarah and I giggled through the whole video I just love their relationship um, Sarah does crochet she is a leather worker um, she hand stitches all of her leather designs um, super talented and she does a little bit of cross stitch, but uh, crochet and her, her leather work is where she's at. Um, but I certainly would love for you to go check her out if you have not. Check out Linda because I want her to continue to make videos. She had made a comment in her last video that she may not make any more videos. And I think her the reason why is is, is silly. And, and I believe... Uh, the Stitchy Witch 42 said in her video the other day, this is real life. And you have a cat making noise or walking in front of your computer or if you're sitting there coughing uh, or the doorbell rings or your washing machine's going, that's life. And we shouldn't have to apologize for that. And I totally agree with her. Um, so, Linda... I hope you continue to make videos because I certainly and truly enjoy watching them. And I want everybody else to go check her out. I will link her below. All right, so let's talk about plans. What am I going to do? Uh, I think that I'm going to work on fall into winter for the rest of today for sure. Um, We'll see what tomorrow brings. Hubby wants to go into the city and do a little shopping, so um, <clears throat> I don't know how long we'll be, be gone tomorrow, but I would like to work on fall and still winter all weekend because I'd like to make a good dent in, in that because um, <clears throat> I haven't worked on it every single day. I try to stitch a little at night when I come home from work. Um, it just depends on how tired I am. Um, <clears throat> I have two two cats that are like babies and I'm sure you can hear Shanna right now with her little spinny toy it's okay it's life right um, <clears throat> so I haven't been able to work on uh, fall into winter every day like I had hoped to so but I want to spend this weekend with it and um, definitely make good more bit more progress on it for the next time I show it to you. Um, <clears throat> and whatever else I feel like working on, I will. I know I'm going to get caught up on Stiach. I may not be caught up through week five. 
um, cause that cut drops tonight, but if I can get up through one through four, um, this week, I'll be very happy about that. Um, I'd like to work more on bloom. I like to get that to a finish. Um, next Saturday, I am going to Needleworkers Delight with Carmen and Caitlin again. Uh, we are meeting up with a bunch of New Jersey stitchers, and I'm so excited to be going because, you know, shopping. I'm thinking about something that I left behind that I would like to get. So, and I think since it's been over a month and it's still on my mind that it needs to come home with me. So I'll show that to you the next time uh, I, I, I've, I film. All right, so what I've decided for my filming schedule, because I know last time I said I didn't know if I was going to do once a week or twice a week. I'm not twice a week. No, not, we're not doing twice a week. Um, every other week. And I've decided that I'm going to try to do every other week. Um, I didn't say this. Today is Saturday, November 10th. Um, so I'm hoping every Saturday or every other Saturday I can do a video. Um, hubby usually goes out uh, and meets up with his, his brother for a few hours. So I have the house to myself with the exception of Shanna and Chloe. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get this up on Sundays. Also, I know I said I was going to film a whip parade, and that is coming. I have the week of Thanksgiving off from work. I took it off. I have a lot of stuff that I want to, to work on um, for Christmas. And I feel that because, you know, we work Monday through Friday. We only have a few hours at night. Um, for what I want to do, I, I want to take some time off from work. So I'm planning on filming my parade and once either Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday I'll film it and then I'm hoping 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 by the following weekend maybe the weekend after I'll get that up um so also I've decided that uh, the 2019 planned video I'm going to film that um, uh, probably mid-December, and I'll probably have that up probably closer towards the end of the year. So that's what I've got going on, and I want to thank everybody who has watched and who has subscribed and who has liked and who has commented. I have read everything. I tried to respond to you, and I truly, truly, truly appreciate it, and um, I hope that if you haven't subscribed, that uh, if you liked what you saw, that you will, and um, come back for my next video. And uh, <clears throat> if you know, you can hit the little bell down below, and that will notify you when I have a new video up. And um, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and happy stitching. Bye.